Hi, Scott Houston here. I had a uh, request to teach some slow blues for we slow-fingered folks. And I got a great one that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, gang. Somebody asked for a slow blues. I got one coming right up. No, it's funny. Somebody uh, had sent in a request, and I get things like this fairly regularly. Where someone says, you know, these things are too fast, and I just don't play, you know, I don't have enough facility yet, and I don't have enough speed to do it. Is there anything fun we can do that's slow? Of course, I always say that's why I play a lot of ballads myself, because, hey, it's easier. But this is going to be a fun blues thing to do. I do have, a, a, it's kind of a, a breakdown, a slower breakdown of some, some things I think I've taught in the past on some of these videos. But this will be great for you, and it's a great chance to to, you know, practice your improvising in your right hand is what it amounts to. But we're going to do it in the key of C, so it'll be, the notes will be pretty straight ahead, and uh, let's just dig right in. Okay, now by the blues, the one thing I have to tell you is just the order that you have to play everything in. In case you haven't heard this before, blues typically comes in a 12-measure pattern, all right? And I'll try to put it up here on the, on the keyboard right here, but it goes like this. There's four measures of C, then two measures of F and two of C, then a measure of G, measure of F, and two more Cs. So that's the 12. Four Cs, two Fs, two Cs, one G, one F, and two Cs. Now, it's funny. When you hear that, you know, you're going to say, oh, my word, I can my ears just hear how to do that. I've heard that your whole life. You have. You're right. You have heard that your whole life. I mean, assuming you listen to Western music, you've heard that your whole life. It's just so obvious, you know, when you should change. But, it's you know, you need to see it at the very beginning. So here we go. So we'll be playing four measures of C. <laughs> Or, you know, actually, you usually, usually play a C7, but not, we're not even going to be doing that. And you go up to the F for two, then back to C. Then you go to one to G, F, C. Okay, so that's it. Well, here's the pattern we're going to do. Here's all we're going to do. Play. Okay, here's middle C on my piano. So I'm two octaves below middle C. So I've just got the two outside notes of, of the triad, if you will, or a major chord. And I'm going to do the same thing when I move to the F chord. You know, I'm going to take out that middle finger. Or the G chord, I'm going to take out that middle finger. Now, I've often taught this thing, this... That kind of thing. But we're going slow. We're going to be slow. Slow down, right? Yeah, we're going to do an easy one. So here we go. It's going to be like this. I'm just going to do this. And it's really hard to play this slow. And the trick to doing slow well is to not speed up, frankly. But here we go. We're just going to go back and forth. That's it. You don't need to tuck your fingers away like I am. I'm doing that so you can see it easier. So I'm just playing the C and G, and then a C and A. And it, a lot of people will probably just use their thumb back and forth. Or you can use your finger like this. The key is your, your pinky is going to stick on the root of whatever chord you're on. You know, when you move to the F, you just lift up, you know, lift your hand up, keep it in the same position. Back and forth, one note at a time. All right? And you go back and see. When you get to the G, you gotta do the same thing here. The F. Alright? We're just gonna follow that pattern we talked about a minute ago. Okay. Alright. So, what can you do with your right hand? Anything you want. But Scott, don't you have anything written down for me? You know, I'm one of those need the music kind of people. How do you expect me to just make it up on the fly? Sorry, you just got to make it up on the fly. Ah! No, here's the thing. This is really why we're doing this. It gives you all this chance to just kind of noodle around. What you'll probably want to stick to, you know, and, and you'll find out that but through... You know, natural selection, you'll start figuring out what notes are clams and which ones are, aren't. But for the most part, here's what you need to do is stick to all the white notes. With the exception of that B flat. All right. Now, the other note that's going to sound good through almost all of this is that E flat. But, you know, if it ever doesn't, just don't play it. And I know that's probably just completely freaking out some of you serious piano players watching this, but it's just the nature of the beast. This is what we're going to do. So we're going to just start out. Now I've got to go to the F chord. 
all right? So I move this up. I'm just completely making this up in my right hand. Going back down to the C. Now I've got to go to the G chord in my left hand. point here is you're really just don't be stressed because it's going to be slow and you can play slower than I did. You don't want to be stressed doing this. So just sit and do that long enough that it's, it's something you can kind of do without thinking. Right? Now these are the equivalent of quarter notes. So every, if that's not clear, when you, once you've played four notes here, one, two, three, four. That's one measure, right? And then you're going to have to do four of those measures based on the pattern we talked about earlier, all right? So in this pattern, four, four things that you hear equals one measure, okay? So we're... That's one, two, three. Just keep it good and slow. Four. The trick is keeping it even. Now go up to the F... two measures. What do you do? Go back to C. For number two. Now here comes a G chord. We're going to have one measure of that. Then we're going to have one measure of an F. Then we're going to go back to the C for two. Okay, so will you just do that and play something in your right hand? Maybe you can, you're really panicking about all the freedom. Stick to one note. <laughs> but, but play a lot of different rhythms. is that you don't lose your track of where you are down here. Okay, I just can't do that anymore. Oh, I just used some black notes. <gasps> no way! Sorry, if you ever want to do that in the very, very last thing before you go back to the top, play just play those. I'm not even going to, it's a G augmented is what it is, but you don't need to know that. Play an F and a B and a D sharp in your right hand. It's a good way to then go back to the beginning. So here we go. I'll play one chorus through, just noodling. See, you get a chance to practice all these things. I mean, that's the point. This is when you're doing something slow like that with your left hand, do, 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 you know, then it allows you to really just noodle. And it's a great, you know, if you've got some keyboard that has headphones or, you know, a digital piano that you can put your headphones on, great, do that. And just spend 20 minutes, half an hour noodling around. That is how you can learn how to start improvise. That's how you can start playing the blues a little bit. It's just, you just got to get out there and do it a little bit, all right? And, and get over this, this thing that I need to be taught everything. And I, I need to see it all written, Scott. I'm that type of person. I read music, right? Nah, you don't. Not in this. This is all about just feeling a little bit. And, and just 
have the freedom to go out and do that. Don't worry about playing wrong notes. When you hit a big, giant clam, you'll know it, right? I mean, if you're playing along and you do something like this, sorry, let me switch back. Where's my, can't find it. There it is. If you switch back, you know, you're going, you're, yeah, I mean, that, that clearly was, you know, kind of sounded kind of funky right there, right? Well, so, you know, note to self, stay away from the F sharp when you're on the C section. You know, right. You know, or the other good great old line is there there are no wrong notes. Some of them just sound better than other. So if you play something that doesn't sound good, don't stay on it, you know. You know. You know, get off of it in a hurry or something. I don't know. I mean the point is there is no absolute right and wrong, with the exception of you need to keep following that twelve measure pattern with your left hand. Okay, that's it. I did it. I gave you a slow blues thing to work on that should really open up the doors and swing open your ability to start improvising a little bit more and not have to panic about improvising over a lot of different chord changes because, you know, you can pretty much hear just with these three chords that, uh, you know, what's going to work and what's not right there. And, and, you know, it's just a process of elimination. If something sounds terrible, don't do it again. Ah. All right. Enough of me. Go play the blues. Very slowly. Have fun.